What's up everyone? Welcome and thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video because the carnage is about to begin <laughs> as I critique my own game. <laughs> as you can see from the screen, I've taken that picture in picture view that we talked about recently. So you're gonna see the first person GoPro view at the top right. And then the main camera is the one that's behind outside the court at the back that we're all accustomed to. So I'm gonna talk about the tactics. I'm gonna talk about some mental side of things about how to maximize value in your training by structure and structuring it a certain way. So let's get into all of that in a moment. The person I'm playing is a student and training partner of mine, Ali. He's quite good. He's uh, 20 years old now, plays, uh, plays at university. He's competing a bit on the PSA as well. So as you'll see momentarily, he beat me in the game that you guys are going to watch. Giving some context, I had hurt my foot. I think I bruised a bone uh, and damaged some of the fat pad in my foot almost five or six weeks ago. So this was my second hit back in quite a while. So my movement is a little bit tentative. My timing is a little bit tentative. But the reason I'm sharing this is not to make an excuse for myself. <laughs> it's to share the mindset side of it. So my entire goal through these sessions is to seek continual improvement, marginal gains, marginal progress. That's the focus. If I, if, I, if I was focused on only showing you guys the best version of myself, well, I wouldn't have put this video up. <laughs> Ali played very well, not taking anything away from him. It's, um, it's a journey back, as, as, any, as I'm sure any of you have uh, experienced with your own injuries. When you play at a certain level, at a certain pace, the timing and the movement and the anticipation, uh, and then just the fear, because my foot still isn't 100%, but the fear of pushing off and re-injuring it is, uh, is always kind of in the back of your mind, so you're a little bit cagey and tentative. But all that being said, I wanted to share with you guys some intentions. And this idea of intentions is critical, because at the beginning of every session, what I like to do and what I encourage all of my students to do is to set an intention for their training. And this could just be a few words, it could be a couple of sentences, uh, a few bullet points about what you want to get out of the session, what you want your focus to be in the session. And this all comes down to priming your brain. So setting, telling your brain what you want to get out of the session, how you want to perform. And it's not just about winning, it's about focusing on the process of what it takes to perform well. So here, I'm gonna share with you guys a little image. Here are my intentions. I just put it as a little draft in my Gmail. My intention was to stay healthy. Number one, the first intention is to stay healthy and to move with control. The last thing I wanted to do was to go out and re-injure myself and aggravate it. So that was, always, that was my number one intention. Once I felt like I was doing that and I felt comfortable with that, then I tried to focus in on the second intention which was to find my targets in the back and to change the pace and more, more accurately to correct the pace. Because in this case, Ali loves to play really fast. He loves to attack, he hits hard. He's pretty quick when he moves. And I didn't wanna play like that, especially knowing that my foot hasn't completely healed. And then my third intention was if I felt comfortable doing those first two things, then I would start to use holds and angles and break some of the patterns because I know that when I use holds from certain positions, it breaks his movement because he's a pretty fluid rhythmical player and he doesn't like those holds all that much. Um, and I wanted to play at a slower pace while using the holds from the volley and then off the ground, you know, cross kills and stuff like that. Now, whether I was successful or not, you guys will find out in a minute. I'm gonna let the game play and then at certain points, I will pause it uh, and then go in slow-mo and then show you guys a couple of things that I want to highlight and most of it is me making mistakes <laughs> so check it out i hope you enjoy it <laughs> so let's start over here this was getting us getting back on court so there you can see there's the picture in picture view i actually quite like it where you get to see the first person view and, and over here this is for context we basically played a length game we played a length game with volley drops and with a counter and now we were going to play a full court game. My foot was feeling okay, so I just said, hey, let's progressively open up the court and I'll just move as much as I possibly can without injuring myself. So here we go, getting into the rallies. You see my length is generally a bit short. That was the first one that got a bit deeper and I pushed Ali off the tee. Otherwise he's cutting everything off at that three quarter court mark. And if you re-watch this, if you choose to, you'll notice that the balls that are getting cut off are the ones that are bouncing in the service box. The ones that are not getting cut off are the ones that are landing behind the service box. All right, try to take it short. 
it's nice and tight. His, he played a nice defensive lob on that. And tell me guys in the comments, what do you think of the picture in picture view? Personally, I really like it because you can choose what to focus on. So let's, let's call this out for a second. So over here, Ali took me short, you know, a little cagey lunge, getting on the ball, and then right there. So he did, he did a little fake, not sure if it faked too much, but what ended up happening is my little high drop, and if you remember, Diego Elias kind of uses that, and I've shown Joel Macon use a high defensive drop, and I'll link to the defensive drop video with Joel Macon if you want to see a better, <laughs> a better execution of that shot. But over here, I took a position and I was a little bit too far to the left, but Ali was very smart when he hit his cross. And I stretched across and I stretched forward. I was a little bit slow, but he hit that really nice width. See his balls hitting the edge, like the middle of the service box, which shows that he's hit really good width to get the ball past my racket. So really good shot by him. So standard jockeying for position on the tee. Both of us are hitting reasonably deep length. And there's my loose ball. And I got punished for that. So as you know, if you haven't played for a little while, when you're playing someone who plays fairly well, finding your length is critical. So as you notice over here, I'm going to go in slow motion. Ali played a ball that kind of was lower and faster, so I had to cut it off over there. Otherwise, I would have been in a lot of trouble. I didn't execute that correctly and I had to push up onto the tee because he loves to play short. So I had no choice but to push up to be able to cover the front and the back of the court. He did, he played a really good ball from that position where he hit it nice and low and hard and through the court and the second bounce is right there and I tried to take my little swipe at it but as you can see I couldn't get under the ball right there as it faded because his ball was like glued to the side wall so very very good execution and you can see i'm nice and stretched out over here but still unable to get it so kudos to ali for uh, for hitting that shot and then i hope you can hear this because i have some negative self-talk i basically said too loose in my mind but after i said too loose i ensure so i always ensure that i refocus my mind so if you say too loose, then you have, to, you have to give yourself a keyword and prime your brain with the way you want to play. So maybe it might be follow through because I kind of broke my wrist on that. So it might be follow through. It might be, you know, hit, hit higher on the front wall. Get whatever, whatever your keyword is given your circumstances, you have to reinforce it. Ideally, don't use the negative in the first place, but if you do, then reinforce it with a positive. Let's keep going. Tried to go for the nick, couldn't execute it. It's good, you gotta try it, right? How else are you gonna build it up? I played the boast, Ali takes me short. I get the decent cross, he scrambles well to pick that up. And then we're back into reset mode. So that boast wasn't super tight, but it was a working boast that kind of changed the pattern a little bit. That was a nice tight squeeze by me, but I didn't do anything with that. I should have probably given myself a bit more space and taken it short. Another short ball but I was a little bit slow to counter that. So let's watch that one again for a second. So here I am experimenting and exploring the volley drop, get the racket up, put that ball in a little bit high, which is not bad, but I caught the side wall, which popped out. So I didn't get my angle right to stick it to the side wall, like the Diego Elias high drop, which I will link to right here. And then once he played, once I played that ball, he played the drop. So I, I take a little split, push off, but I get to it, but I'm trying to be a little bit too fine catching the tin. It's okay. Incremental improvement, right? <laughs> and you'll see as the game goes on, I'll point out a couple of things. Now over here, I had a tiny hold over there, which stalled his movement for a second. So this goes back to my other intention. So watch this. I'll play it in slight slow-mo. 
serve comes I get the racket ready little hold and I snap from behind and you see the effect of that shot his momentum went to the right the ball's going to the left so he has to make an adjustment and I think it took kind of faded a little bit and he tried to be a little bit too fine with that boast hence hitting the tin so that little subtle sh hold kind of caused things to shift just enough for him to make that error he's hitting some good length and jumping on the volley keeping me behind him and there that's just me not being very present and focused so here I am watch this he hits a nice width can't get on the volley and then I get way too close to the ball and I try to hit it cross instead of just resetting it so that's me trying to force the ball and I'm just lacking patience in that example but then over here you see me well you see my hand <laughs> pointing to exactly where I know I should be hitting which is hit the ball straight so I'm reminding myself of the correct shot and I'm cueing myself on the spacing side of it if I'm aware enough in the moment but right there I'm definitely reminding myself that I need to hit straight and here we have uh, my colleague getting a nice little <laughs> dropping into the video <laughs> I figured I'd leave that in so right there I attempt to change the angle but it's a little bit too short Adi likes going short and he hits it well so check this out my length is a bit short so he's controlling me his is a bit short and instead of going straight which would have been the right shot I tried to flick it and I caught the sidewall that was that was a problem for me well number one I shouldn't have flicked that cross I should have hit that straight and then if I hit it this loose he likes playing that straight drop he likes attacking from the midcourt and if you watch on the GoPro as well right there that ball essentially nicked and rolled out and you see me laboring into the front of the court because he hit such a good ball uh, and, and the foot was a little bit, uh, you know, still a little hesitant at this point in time. It got a bit better, as you'll see. Tried to put a little hold on that cross. Fake the cross kill in the nick and then hit the drive. So the length is getting a little further back. He takes me in. I play a little trickle boast. Probably not the optimal time given his position. But here I am volleying a little bit more but you see my length is too short so I'm having to take everything a three-quarter court or I'm being pushed into the back and he's getting to control me and there I got a lucky bounce after the anticipation so check this out again so he puts the ball in nice drop I get my racket under you see I'm forced to take it out in front and I just push the ball back onto the front wall try to keep it relatively short relatively tight he comes up into the front court you see that I have to stay relatively far up because my ball is a little bit tighter it's not glued but if the tighter it gets the closer I can the more I can poach over to the left side or the more I can cheat the looser my ball is the easier it is for him to hit the cross or the straight and then I'm really in trouble so over here my ball is decent I anticipate that he's going to go straight so I put the foot down push back and I play a quick little volley. I could have taken a stroke, but I wanted to play the volley because I want to try to play as, as often as possible and then make him do a little bit of work. I got lucky with the bounce over there and he couldn't quite get under that ball. Offer the apology and then you move forward. I mean, I, you gotta take everything you can get <laughs> when you're not playing your best squash. <laughs> Still have to apologize though and on we go it's a little bit better on the length by me getting him into the back and his is generally more consistent than mine I think he clipped me over there so we played a let so here I try to find my length a little bit more start to hit a few targets it's just not consistent enough but that one was short but it was tight so I got lucky on the squeeze it's a nice little boast by him again unable to move quickly enough to cover that ball he also broke the pattern because that was the first boast he played from that position so that made it 
doubly hard for me to uh, to get up on that ball. It's a better length. It's good kind of rallying for position. Just to reset when you're not quite in the right position. And there is me, there I am forcing the ball, not quite there. To be honest, depending on your skill level, that that ball that I played, that volley that was kind of by my feet, here I'll play it again for you guys. And here. So normally, that's a ball that can go in. And depending on your skill level, you may or may not want to take that in. Normally, that's a ball I can put in, but Again, the timing is a little bit off. I didn't quite get low enough for that. So a few factors that prevented me from picking, getting that ball onto the front wall. There I was again, just like, just rushing it. Not in the right position, forcing the boast. The first length was too loose and too short. So, you know, a lot of stuff that needs to be reprocessed. It's a little bit better on the reset. It's a little bit too short again. So I'm kind of, my swing's a little bit too short right now. I'm not hitting through the ball. Snappy can work if you're hitting it cleanly, but you still have to hit through it. Attempt to go short, plays a nice ball. And then the rally kind of resets and continues from there. Again, too short by me. He's pushing me back again. That was a better line by me. Some better volley drop to attack. A little bit of a hold, which throws him off a bit, but he recovers well. A little hold there on the length. Both volleying a bunch to really maintain position of the tee. running through the ball a bit and then just using height to give myself time see that time I adjusted a bit and managed to play that that drop this is a nice you know it's it's a much better rally from from both of us I mean he was playing reasonably well that was a much better rally for me I tried to play the drop but then got stuck because he played a nice trickle boss at a good time and we both we both worked hard, so we kind of commended each other. And over here, I had a lesson waiting. The people you see outside, so <laughs> I just had to check the time to make sure that uh, we weren't on. And then our young friend decided to start warming up a little bit before not realizing that the camera was on. And then he <laughs> realized it. <laughs> so here is where my intentionality in my own mind. I reminded myself that. I want to play at my pace. I need to find my targets. Wrong choice with the trickle boost over there, but I got lucky because he tried to be overly, overly fancy. He didn't adjust his feet and get in the right position. But I'll take it. And there's a little bit. So here's where I think physically it got into him a little bit and mentally because that we had that one really hard rally, of, you know, one or two rallies ago. I think that took a bit of a toll on him. And that's the way that I want to be playing with him, with better length than I have been hitting, but with an aggressive position on the tee, like over there, I'm volleying, I'm getting on the ball early, resetting it over there because I wasn't in position to attack, even though it was loose. Right. A little bit of interference over there, playing the, Score? Playing the friendly let. Talking a bit about the score over here. Okay. Making sure we get it right. Over here I started feeling like I was getting a bit more confident with the movement, starting to attack short a little bit more, volleying a bit more, just adding more dimensions to the game, which is necessary uh, at, at this level. You can't be unidimensional, and I was playing unidimensional for most of this game and the previous condition games 
That's a good one. Do you guys think that's a letter or stroke? Let's watch that again. As you can hear from our conversation. We disagreed on it. <laughs> He's not happy. I think it's a stroke. Felt like I would have hit him on the follow through. The folks outside suggested that it was a stroke. Ali thought that it was uh, a let. We'll watch the video later. I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys think. And then I just hit way too loose. He took his space in the mid court. Punish me for that. See, I used to think that was blocking, but it's not blocking because I created the interference by playing such a loose ball. A bit of a hold over there by me, but now he's on it early. I'm moving a little bit better into the front. Using that skid boast as a bit of a defense, keeping the ball tight. A little bit of a hold to snap through, change the direction on both sides. And then that one I accelerated onto. So if, I, if you watch that again, so watch my feet over here. So once I hit the cross, he plays a nice boast and I'm quick onto it. And because I'm quick onto it, and then I play it crisply, it takes time away from him. And I broke the movement pattern of me moving a little bit slower and hitting at a medium pace. So that's why it was far more effective. Kind of took up a little space, had a bit of deception with my body over there and hit the ball straight. I'll show you guys that one again in case you missed it. So he had something slightly loose. I, mo I made space with my feet. So I'm going to show you one more time because this is important from a coaching perspective. So watch here. The ball comes right back in the middle. And then watch me adjust my feet a little bit. It's coming at me. But I make space with my feet. And try to get out of the way. And then it looks like I'm going to go cross because of the way kind of my, my body's angled. But I end up going straight. So most people don't move their feet. and They kind of stay facing the front wall and then they just try to do something with their racket. You really have to try to give yourself space even if the ball is coming at you. If it's coming at you and you can't move your feet quickly enough, you still have to adjust your upper body a little bit. So there has to be an adjustment. So that's something that I'd encourage you guys to take away. If anything from this video, just think about adjusting to give yourself space depending on where the ball is going. Although there's a lot more than that uh, that you can take away. And here's a little boast and it took a bit of a funny bounce. And that was the end of me. <laughs> so here's some coaching points for you guys. We are not always going to play our best. In fact, it's rare that we will play our best. The goal is to try to play to the best of your potential on that given day. It is to try to progressively improve. Now there's a quote, a success definition by John Wooden, a former basketball coach at UCLA. And he essentially said, and I'm paraphrasing, success is the peace of mind that is attained by doing the best that we are capable of at a given point in time. So success is effort based. If I set my intentions, like I shared with you guys earlier, to come out injury free, to have fun, to challenge my movement a bit, to find my targets, to change angles and eventually start using holds. If I can get through as much of that as possible, that to me is success. Whether I win or lose the game is not success because you got to think about what you can control and what you cannot control. So keep that idea of success in mind. Focus on intentions. Give yourself, your brain, a direction and purpose when you're getting on court. If you can keep your focus on incremental improvement, I don't know if you felt this way or not, as the game went on, I incrementally improved. At the start of the game, my length was consistently short and loose. As the game went on, that got better, and I started attacking the front of the court more. I started accelerating onto the ball a little bit more. So to me, despite losing that game, it was a huge success to progressively be able to start doing some of the things that I normally do. Now, is there a long way to go? Sure, there might be a long way to go. And if I want to continue to improve, there are, there are umpteen things I can do. But I need to focus on the process and set an intention and get it done. So that fourth point, was this a success? To me, this session was a massive success, even though I lost. And some people might get their ego in the way and say, hey, you lost the guy that you coach. Well, I hope to lose to guys that I coach as they get older, because that means that they are getting better. So that means that I'm doing an effective job when I coach them. So this session was a massive success for me. I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you think 
this session was a success. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you feel of intentionality, uh, the definition of success I shared, and also how the picture-in-picture -picture camera views worked out. As always, if you like the video, guys, please like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, leave a comment if you want to share something. I would actually love for you to leave a comment on that letter stroke decision, whether this session was a success or not for me, and how you like the picture-in-picture -picture view. All right, guys, have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.